Full of Otis McCain, Eric Hernandez joins us live this noon, explaining who the jury will hear from later today. Police say they know who, what motivated a shooting overnight that left a man hurt in his own West Side home. Katrina Weber will have the latest for us. Live from Case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. The trial of Otis McCain continuing today. Day four of testimony and new evidence is being presented. Erica Hernandez has been covering this trial daily, joining us live from the Justice Center. Erica, yesterday we heard from a lot of the witnesses to the shooting. What can we expect today? Yeah, today testimony will continue with SAPD bike patrol officer Gustavo Segura. Now, yesterday at the end of the day, he testified about seeing Detective Benjamin Marconi the November 20th morning when their shift started. He then spoke about the moments the call went out for an officer down and him getting to the scene minutes later. Once he got there, he noticed that other officers were already there rendering first aid. I did see that there was an officer on the ground. Did you get a good look at the officer that was on the ground? No, he had, uh, I believe it was like a t-shirt that was wrapped around his head. Uh, when I asked if, if there was anything that they needed from my medical kit, um, I remember Frank Reese looking at me and saying that he, it's a headshot wound, so there's nothing that I had that would be beneficial. He's like, we just need to apply pressure. Now, Officer Segura is expected to start the day on the stand, and footage from his body camera is expected to be shown. Now, court will resume this afternoon at 1230. You can watch it all live on KSAT.com. From the Cadenaries Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Erica. Trouble was waiting inside and outside of a West, Ma West Side man's front door. San Antonio police say that someone shot him overnight just as soon as he opened his door. It happened on El Paso Street near South, Ju South General McMullen. Katrina Weber reports police say money may have been the motive. A 37-year-old man is ready for a ride to a hospital after becoming a crime victim in his own home. Police say someone knocked on his door in the 4100 block of El Paso Street overnight with no plans for a friendly visit. He instead seemed to have robbery on his mind. Police say he shot the victim in his chest, leaving him in critical condition. When officers arrived around three this morning, paramedics had him in the driveway working to save his life. Police say it wasn't long after the man heard the knock on the door that he heard the crackle of gunfire. They say the shots were fired with very few words being exchanged. They say the victim told them the man at the door asked for money. When he said he didn't have any, he tried to force his way in, then pulled the trigger. The shooter ran off before police arrived. They say the only description they had is that he was wearing a dark colored shirt. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And this noon, San Antonio police hoping that you can help solve a couple open cases. First, a robbery at an east side apartment complex. So take a look at your screen. Officers hoping to track down this individual. These images taken on May 29th at a convenience store near the Roseville Apartments on East Houston Street. That's near I-10. Now, police say the victim withdrew money from an ATM and the suspect followed him. That one officers say the suspect demanded money from the victim, choked him when he didn't hand it away right away. The suspect then took off after the robbery. Next up, officers also want to find this person wanted in connection with a robbery at a bakery on North Stars and Warrant near West Woodlawn Avenue. Now, police tell us the suspect walked into the bakery demanding money from a worker back on June 16th. That suspect also pointing his hand, which was wrapped in cloth, at the worker. Not clear if he actually had a weapon, but police say he ran off before investigators were able to respond to the scene. If you have any information that can help officers in either of these cases, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. Today, the first payments in the Biden administration's enhanced child tax credits are set to start hitting bank accounts. About 39 million households and 88 percent of the nation's kids are estimated to be covered by the enhanced credits. The Internal Revenue Service has partnered with nonprofits to reach households that may not file taxes. Those families can apply online to the IRS website. We'll have more details in the next half hour. Well, if you have tickets to see comedian Gabriel Iglesias, better known as Fluffy, listen up. The Tobin Center shows are now canceled. The comedian announcing on his Twitter account that he was diagnosed with COVID. Iglesias made the announcement on his birthday saying he had body aches and chills, but otherwise feels, quote unquote, pretty good. He says that he is vaccinated. He credits these mild symptoms to the vaccination. 
The comedian says he needs to isolate and will lay low until he has three negative COVID tests. Then he'll get back to work. If you did have tickets, you should get an automatic refund within the next 24 hours. Those who paid by credit card may experience a bit of a delay. And if you paid with a check, a refund will be mailed to you. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic worldwide. Health officials locally and around the country and around the globe sounding the alarm about the Delta variant. It is spreading quickly and it's now accounting for at least 58% of COVID-19 cases here in the U.S. And that race to vaccinate more and more urgent as the days go on. As ABC's Rena Roy reports, most of the country seeing a surge in positive cases. Calls for more Americans to get vaccinated growing louder as the Delta variant races across the country. Angela Morris's 13-year-old daughter, Kaya, fighting the virus in the hospital. I really want parents to know that getting your children vaccinated is obviously better than the situation we're in right now. Some health experts say they're seeing more severe symptoms in children who test positive for the Delta variant. Though data shows it's unclear if it's deadlier. People who are unvaccinated are more likely to get severe symptoms and end up in the hospital. And what we're seeing now is that um, children are now more likely to be unvaccinated. Utah has no mandatory COVID protocols in place. Officials there are now investigating COVID outbreaks at 10 different summer camps in one week. It's just perhaps a glimpse of what's of, uh, of really of what's to come for the school year. A troubling trend of new cases causing concern across the country with positive tests rising nearly 87 percent since mid-June. In Los Angeles, cases are up 500 percent over the past month. Officials there say all patients hospitalized at county-run facilities are unvaccinated. Meantime, with Tennessee facing low vaccination rates, Memphis Children's Hospital will now require all staff members to get their shots. If not, they could face termination. Vaccine hesitancy is still preventing many from doing so. This mother and son in North Carolina now doing their part to educate others after they both battled the virus in the hospital. That it is not worth not taking the vaccine because of what it can do to your family. In his first advisory to the American people, the U.S. Surgeon General issuing a warning about health misinformation, saying it's an urgent threat to public health and puts lives at risk by essentially scaring people out of getting their shots. In recent months, 67 percent of unvaccinated adults have heard at least one vaccine myth. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. As Texas Democrats hold out in Washington, D.C., an attempt to avoid a vote in the Texas House on a contentious elections bill. Here in Texas, clergy members coming together this morning, they held a march and a prayer for voting rights. Texas Democrats are in Washington. They're lobbying federal lawmakers trying to pass the John Lewis for the People Act. Democrats say they're fighting to prevent voter suppression. They left Texas on Monday. This morning, black clergy and the Texas NAACP held a prayer and march in Austin. They say they're hoping to appeal to the moral conscience of policymakers. We have come to Austin as a coalition of conscience because it is evident by the agenda that has been put out by the governor of this state that Texas is lacking a conscience. Yeah. And because you are lacking a conscience, we're going to bring a sense of conscience right here to yeah. Texas. Lawmakers in Austin uh, Republicans who hold the majority in the House and the Senate have pushed forward a bill that would add new restrictions on voting. And Democrats in Washington are not there, so there is no quorum to vote on that bill. The Texas Senate passed controversial elections bill in the meantime and mail legislation as well this week. Pretty typical July weather this weekend, but things change again next week. More chances for rain. We've got to look at the seven day forecast coming up. And a lot of basketball to talk about. We are in the midst of the finals, plus WNBA All-Star activities. Larry joins us with the sports. According to the CDC, drowning the leading cause of death for children. After the break, how survival swimming lessons can keep your child safe. Welcome back. In seconds, a trip to the pool, the lake, or even the bathtub could turn deadly for your children. 
To help protect children, many parents this summer are choosing to enroll their little one in something called survival swimming lessons. Lisa Barra visited Infant Aquatics on the city's far north side to learn more about the lessons that could save your child's life. At first, it seems a little shocking. A child being submerged in the water and crying as soon as they come up. But certified infant aquatics instructor Regina Rodriguez says it's due to the child having separation anxiety. If a child is crying, it's a child that is floating, so they're going to be fine. In the beginning, it was kind of nerve-wracking because it is sad to see your kids cry, but it is it is definitely that because it's, it's separation anxiety. Adara is 14 months old, and she's completed the six-week swim survival course this summer, which equals a total of 24 10-minute lessons. We uh, teach them how to control their breathing so they can hold their breath and they can do all, all that and when, once they come out, they can breathe. The second stage of lessons are for toddlers like Harper. Instructor Jennifer Kahn stands closely to Harper, keeping her eyes on her the entire time as Harper floats, swims, and floats again to catch her breath. Once they start going uh, underwater and then they start floating, and they keep swimming to get to the side, to the edge, and uh, eventually like get out in case they're on a, an accident. According to the CDC, drowning is a leading cause of death for children, an experience Rodriguez remembers all too well. He put his face in and he couldn't bring it out. And he was walking and he was, I was sitting there next to him and so that's what I started doing there. Survival swimming. She's been helping save kids' lives through these lessons for the past 10 years. Infant Aquatics offers one-on-one -on -one lessons for children six wow. months to six years old nationwide, including here in San Antonio. You can visit caseout.com for more information. Alicia Barrera, KSAT, 12 News. All right, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. And Alicia's story, it was gorgeous out there. We saw blue skies, a little hazy out there now, Justin. Hopefully no lightning. No, that, I, I don't think we'll see much today. We did have some of that yesterday. Some downpours come through with some mighty and thunder. A little bit less activity on the radar today. Still pop up storm can't be ruled out. Uh, look at the aquifer. It's actually going down today, two tenths of a foot. First time it's headed down in a while. 671 even. And in pollen count, we have moderate counts of mold and fall elms showed up today for whatever reason. It's a month early. It's in a moderate category at 170. Pigweed is low. We'll talk more about your forecast, which includes some more rain chances down the line coming up. Welcome back 1216 this afternoon. It is Thursday. I have still not had a head day without rain this week. You know, I, now that you mentioned it, <laughs> it's true. And and yesterday, man, that was, those were some thunder boomers moving through the city. Yeah, they came through, dropped some good rain. We had some decent numbers around the area. I'll show you some of those numbers here in just a second. Uh, we're looking at the drop monitor first, though, guys. And this really is great news, not necessarily out west, but for us here in Texas. We'll start out west because that's where the problems still are, stretching from Las Vegas up to Salt Lake City down into Arizona. There's still exceptional drought underway. They have had some rain out there, but not enough to get rid of that drought. So it's the western half of the country that's in a lot of trouble, not Texas. Most of Texas, in fact, is out of the drought. Only 5% of the state in drought. As we zoom in a little bit closer, our area looking really good. For the first time in two years, none of our area is in drought. Pretty incredible. And the rainfall since about May has made all the difference in the world. We've We've seen it uh, be quite plentiful, and that was the case yesterday. We picked up about half an inch there at Stinson, tenth of an inch at the airport officially, nearly a quarter of an inch in Seguin, Beeville over an inch, Kennedy about a tenth of an inch, Victoria, same story. It was spotty hit or miss type stuff, but there were some good downpours mixed in there, and that added up to some pretty decent totals. We are not seeing the coverage that we saw yesterday on today's radar. Just a couple showers east and northeast of Victoria, but really not detecting much of these clouds building up into showers or storms with the sea breeze. And I think this afternoon it's possible, but our rain chances are probably 20% or less. Our computer model uh, is sticking with the idea of a couple popping up south and east of San Antonio, although this might be overdone just a little bit. Uh, by five, five o'clock, there's still that chance there. And then after that, once the sun goes down, we lose all of our activity with the loss of daytime heating. Rest of today here in San Antonio, We'll top out close to 90, 91 degrees, I think, later today. Uh, about a 20% chance of rain, as I mentioned, generally east of I-35. 
There's the scene outside right now. We've got partly cloudy skies and really a pretty nice day. 82 at the airport and southerly winds at about 8 miles per hour. Temperatures 85 New Braunfels, 82 Canyon Lake, 84 Comfort, 82 Rio Medina, 87 right now in Divine and some upper 80s Carrizo Springs and Cotula. This is right about where we've been each and every day. This will take us into the uh, low 90s for highs this afternoon, which is below average. There will be heat index today and uh, we will feel like it's in the mid to maybe upper 90s in some cases. Tomorrow that heat index probably jumps up close to 100. And I think we see that through the weekend. So just a heads up uh, if you're going to be out and about. It's a little toasty, a little humid this weekend for sure. Things do change though next week. Some encouraging changes if you're a fan of the rain. The pattern changes again because we have our high pressure, which has kind of been edging in a little bit. Well, now it moves back to the north and west again, and this opens the door. A little disturbance rolls through. And by Tuesday, we're looking at a pretty decent shot at some showers and storms, maybe even a frontal boundary around here. And that'll be the case Wednesday, too. So we could get more rain in the forecast. Temperatures as a result will come down. And it's uh, back to that pattern that we've been seeing most of the summer. 91 degrees today, as I mentioned, 20% chance of an isolated storm south and east. Just a 10% chance Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I don't think we see much, but there will be some of that Saharan dust in the sky Friday, Saturday, so it could be a little bit hazy. As far as temperatures go, low 90s through about Monday, and then with that uh, added cloud cover and chances for rain, we drop the highs into the upper 80s. Tuesday and Wednesday with a 40% chance for showers and storms, guys. All right. Are you sure it's July? I'm just, can we double check? It's, uh, it's strange, but it's good. Justin Horn, thank you so much. All right, from rain and water to rain and threes, we got finals coverage. And Giannis Adenokounmpo didn't reach 40 points last night. Mm -hmm. Still had a huge double-double, and he came up with a key block late in the game when the Suns were attempting to tie the contest, and we're going to be talking about this block for a long time to come. And Devin Booker had a huge game last night, but unfortunately in a losing effort coming up. Just a uh, hustle play. Um, I thought I'm going to get dunked on. But instead, Giannis came up with a huge block shot. The summer calling a series changing play in big board sports. The Deer District is very excited now the NBA Finals is tied to two games all. Their Bucks held home court, winning games three and four. The Suns led by nine with 11.42 left in the fourth quarter, and that's when the Bucks stormed back. That dunk by Giannis Adenokounmpo got them within three. Then some four and a half minutes later, Pat Connaughton goes triple, and the Bucks lead 97-95 with three minutes left in regulation. Now for the block of the series. Suns down two. Devin Booker drives in, lobs it to DeAndre Ayton, but the Greek Freak blocks the shot with a buck 15 on the clock. Now let's look at that again. Booker to 6'11. Aiden, who gets denied by 6'11. Giannis, perfect timing on that to tell him, no way, dude. Chris Paul made a costly turnover with 35 seconds to go, and the Bucks win game for 109 103, tying this at four all. Chris Middleton led Milwaukee with 40 points. And here's Giannis on his block shot. You know, I saw the play coming. Uh... I am so that uh, Chris, Chris Paul was throwing the lob. So I'm, like, I just, I'm just going to jump vertical, you know, towards the rim. Hopefully I can, you know, be there in time. And uh, I was there in time and was able to get a good block and uh, go down uh, and get to point. So, so uh, it was a great house play. Suns guard Devin Booker poured in 42 points last night after scoring 10 in game three. His teammates said he'd bounce back, and he did. Chris Paul scored just 10 and also had five costly turnovers. You know, I said that after last game, too, um, when I struggled shooting it. Um, the main objective is to win the game, so anything that goes on throughout the game, it you know, it, it doesn't matter for real. You know, you can't just bank on the fact that you got home court. You got to go out there and play the game. You know what I'm saying? You got to go out there and execute. So um, we'll do that. We'll do that. We we tend to respond well, um, but it's easy. We know what we got to do. We know what we got to do. Um, be be better. Game five is Saturday night at eight in Phoenix, live right here on KSAT 12. WNBA All-Star Game went down last night. Team WNBA versus Team USA before they leave for the Olympics. 
Candace Parker with a sweet bounce pass to Enrique Ogunbowale, Brittany Griner. She would lead Team USA with 18 points and 14 rebounds with a nice little jump hook right there by her. But Ogunbowale was too much for Team USA, a three-pointer and a foul in the fourth quarter. She scored a game-high 26 to help Team at WNBA win 93-85, and she took home game MVP honors. Team USA guard Sue Bird said they're not a team yet because they're still learning how to play as a team. USA will face Australia on Friday, Nigeria Sunday in exhibitions in Las Vegas. And in AA baseball last night, the missions uh, left 12 runners on base and a 3-2 loss in extra innings to the Hooks. The Hooks walked it off with an RBI single in the bottom of the 10th. Right, how are the missions looking this year? Eh, they're below 500. Okay, not great. Not great. All right, Vroom for improvement. But still though. fun to watch. Love it. There you go. We'll see you in a little bit. For millions of American families, monthly payments from the expanded child tax credit are now on their way. How some families might be eligible even if they didn't meet the income threshold to file. And a backlog of DACA applications starting to affect those who benefit from the program. We explain after the break. Welcome back. Happening right now, day four of the Otis McCain trial about to start. This is a live look inside the courtroom. McCain, of course, accused of shooting and killing San Antonio Police Detective Benjamin Marconi. We're live streaming the entire trial on KSAT.com, and we're going to have a wrap-up after today's proceedings. You can see that tonight at 5 and 6. All right, well, a backlog of DACA applications leading to major consequences. Some people even losing their jobs. Roughly 13,000 DACA renewal cases have remained pending longer than four months. All of this according to the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services correspondence. It's led to some people to lose their jobs and lose their health insurance. The Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program shields undocumented immigrants who came to the United States as children from deportation and allows them to legally work here in the United States. Some Democratic lawmakers sent a letter to the head of Homeland Security expressing the importance for work permits for these DACA recipients. More money in the bank for millions of families. The first payments from the expanded child tax credit set to start arriving today. And the IRS and other financially minded groups are doing whatever they can to get the word out to all of those who are eligible. Karen Kafa looks at what households need to know. For millions of American families. Those of you who are in that situation are going to start to see that coming in by the end of this month on a monthly basis. Monthly payments of up to $300 per child under age 6 and up to $250 per child under age 17 are on the way. The result of a possibly temporary expansion of the child tax credit, part of the massive COVID relief package signed by President Joe Biden in March. Households that filed a 2020 or 2019 federal income tax return and claim the regular child tax credit will get payments automatically but families are eligible even if they didn't meet the income threshold to file. If you have a child living in your home for more than half the year, also important that if, as long as the child has a social security number, you are eligible for the child tax credit. The IRS and groups that help low-income families are working to get that word out, first pointing to IRS.gov. Those families that traditionally have not filed a tax form can just go online enter their information, it's just basic information, who you are, where you live, how old are your children, and where can the money be sent to. If internet access is a hurdle, families can seek a group offering free summer tax help, like Cash Campaign of Maryland in and around Baltimore. If there's someone that's helping folks to do your taxes for free in your area, that's the ideal place to go. The other thing is, you know, working with, with neighbors, friends, trusted advisors that might be able to help you to navigate. Joseph Lightman Santa Cruz of Capital Area Asset Builders, which offers financial programs and education for low and moderate income black and brown families in the Washington, D.C. area, also advises preparing for future payments. Open an account with either a credit union or a bank. Let's not waste your money because you might be unbanked or underbanked. Let's make sure that the money gets directly deposited into your account. Child tax Tax credit payments are scheduled around the 15th of each month through the end of 2021. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. New research shows that millions of children across the world miss their routine vaccinations during this pandemic. Research and anal researchers analyze immunization data from 1980 to 2019 to estimate how many routine vaccinations would have been expected if the pandemic never happened. It found at least 17 million children across the world 
likely missed routine vaccinations during the pandemic. The study coincides with data showing orders for routine vaccines for children also down during the pandemic. Researchers found the disruptions in vaccinations impacted both high income and low income countries and were most severe in April of last year across all regions. Looking outside with live cam. <laughs> it's a prettier day than most. Look at that beautiful, what do they call it? Storybook sky. Oh, good way to put it. Some blue skies there starting to shine through. The only bad thing about seeing some of those blue skies is it means temperatures are going to go up quite a bit this afternoon. Still below average and uh, we'll see highs probably in the low 90s. Let's take a look at some of the headlines. Uh, isolated showers possible today south and east of town, but the chances are low and certainly lower than what we were looking at yesterday for the weekend. Hot, humid. We could see more of that dust. Unfortunately, it'll make for some hazy skies probably on Saturday. It also creates some pretty nice sunrises and sunsets. Check that out. And then by next week, we'll have better rain chances back in place. Pretty good looking setup for some showers and storms Tuesday and Wednesday. Right now we're in the 80s, 82 at the airport, 83 Randolph, 85 New Braunfels, 81 Bernie Stage, 82 right now in Tarpley. Still in the 70s around Lost Maples. And for July, this, these are pretty good numbers. I uh, want to show you the aquifer real quick. It's in really good shape. We had a little bit of a dip early in the month, but the recent rains have brought it up back to uh, 670. So we're still well above stage one. The 10 day average is 668.5. Uh, looking at the forecast for today, 20% chance of rain through the afternoon. Temperatures stop out at 91 and the rain chances go away tonight. Again, a hot weekend on the way and we'll take a closer look at those rain chances next week. Coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys. Now the Cuban government now deciding to lift custom restrictions on food, medicine and hygiene supplies after those widespread protests across Cuba. Now these protests driven in part by chronic shortages across stores. The new measure will stay in place for the rest of the year. Cuba's president called protesters criminals. However, he also said the government needs to do more outreach and improve conditions in their poor neighborhoods that were rocked by these protests. The Federal Reserve Chairman says inflation will be an issue for the next few months. He's now addressing concerns that out of control inflation could jeopardize the current health of the economy. And a famous local fighter giving back to the community in a big way. Larry joins us again to explain. General Motors has a new warning about recalled vehicles. Why it's telling its customers not to charge up Chevy Bolts overnight. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Hello, everyone. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. Facebook says they'll pay out a billion dollars to creators who produce content for their platforms. The social media giant says their plan to roll out new bonus programs by the end of the year. This will pay content creators for hitting specific milestones. Facebook intends on launching dedicated spaces for creators on Instagram starting this summer and Facebook in the fall. Meanwhile, over 150 companies urging Congress to pass their voting rights legislation. The John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act would restore an updated version of the Justice Department Department's pre-clearance authority to approve voting changes in jurisdictions, all with a history of discrimination. And General Motors sending out a warning to 2017 to 2019 Bolt electric vehicle owners, don't charge your vehicles overnight. GM also says to park outdoors immediately after charging your vehicles. The warning only applies to the 69,000 Bolt EVs that were part of the recall back in November. This comes after two of those vehicles caught fire after they were repaired as part of the recall meant to address fire risks. And that's your Cheddar News, business and tech update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell testifying on inflation and what the U.S. is now prepared to do about it. That's right. As prices for nearly everything climb higher and higher, some lawmakers growing concerned that the Fed simply is not doing enough to help our economy recover from this pandemic. CNN's Mandy Gaither takes a look at the testimony and how Powell is addressing criticism. In the hot seat, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell addressing surging inflation before the House Financial Services Committee, saying he expects inflation to stay hot in the coming months before cooling off. Inflation has increased notably and will likely remain elevated in coming months before moderating. 
Wednesday's testimony comes amid growing concerns that out of control inflation could jeopardize the current health of the economy as it roars back from COVID-19 shutdowns. Let's be clear, inflation is a tax hike on everyday consumers and small businesses. Inflation is accelerating at the fastest pace in 13 years. Powell addressing lawmakers' concerns, saying inflation metrics are being exaggerated by the fact that prices completely crashed last spring when the pandemic erupted. He says rapid price Price hikes are temporary and will partially reverse as the bottlenecks ease in the coming months. He also promised the Fed is ready to act if necessary if they notice signs that inflation expectations are persistently above the central bank's goals. But said the economy is a ways off from where it needs to be for the central bank to change its current policy. However, Powell did say Fed officials are discussing whether it should scale back its asset purchases, saying they're looking at several metrics to make those decisions. It really is a very broad range of things, including wages, unemployment, levels of employment, participation, all those things. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. All right, well, back here at home, taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 85 degrees. What did you call the, the outlook? You know, in the, the children's storybooks, there's oh, always these with the big puffy, puffy clouds, clouds with the blue, with the blue sky. sky, sun shining brightly. <laughs> See the castle there in the background. <laughs> Uh, 82 degrees so far today. 74 was the low this morning. 95 is the average high, and uh, that's important because we've been below average pretty much all month long. Today will be no exception. We're expecting highs in the low 90s. Record is 102 set back in 1989. There are a couple showers now showing up on radar. We'll take a look at the radar when we come back. Welcome back. 12.45 this Thursday afternoon. I think the question so many of us have been asking, when will it finally feel like summer here? Uh, apparently not on June 15th. Oh. No. Not, not really. We may just get through July without <laughs> feeling much like summer. For so many people, that's a good thing. That's yeah, okay. It really is. I've had a lot of people ask me, too, when can I mow my yard? Mm. Uh, probably this weekend you'll have some opportunities. Uh, uh, there are going to be some showers on the radar, but I don't think all that much. As we get into next week, it gets wet again, so... This week, it might be a good time to do that. Uh, we're also watching for the threat for a little bit of Saharan dust. You know, we had some move through earlier this week, and now it looks like we're going to get another plume starting tomorrow. Uh, this is around 5 o'clock. It does show some of that uh, dust trying to kick in. Not a big plume here. We see some of those darker colors. That's where it will be thickest. But I think uh, here over San Antonio, we'll at least see some of that into Saturday. So it'll be a little bit hazy for the first half of the week, and by Sunday, it tries to dissipate a little bit. For those who are allergic to this kind of thing, uh, keep that in mind. Friday, Saturday, that's the time frame where we may see some of that move through. Uh, meantime, uh, let's take a look at the radar real quick. I wanted to do that because we do have some showers out there. If you're uh, watching from Quero or out towards Lavaca County, starting to see some pop-ups here. Nothing that's too heavy, but a couple lightning strikes showing up. And we have seen maybe a few blips on the radar out towards Seguin as well. A little closer look here around Howitzville. A little shower pass through. You may see a couple more before the afternoon's over with. And then right around Seguin, there's been a couple of maybe uh, sprinkles, few light showers tracking through. Not a lot here around San Antonio. We're not expecting too much today. There is still that outside chance of a shower uh, developing. Here's the big picture across the country. And if you're doing some traveling this weekend, uh, there is going to be some active weather to the north, places like Wichita, Chicago, dealing with some uh, rain today. And there could be a few stronger storms. Marginal risk, and then where you see this yellow color, there's a slight risk for some severe weather today just north of St. Louis. But that's where the active weather will be next couple of days up there across the Midwest. Here in Texas, it's just those uh, afternoon showers and then a little bit of activity there in the Texas panhandle as well. Temperatures are below average here in San Antonio and all across Texas. These are great numbers for July. The heat index will be pushing 100 in a few spots because of the humidity, but the air temperatures in the low 90s for the most part. And our forecast does call for a couple of isolated showers south and east of San Antonio through the afternoon. This is around 5 o'clock today. Isolated stuff uh, east of I-35, and then by tonight it all dies down with the loss of daytime heating. And it should be a pretty nice evening. Forecast calls for 91, 5 o'clock, 20% chance of rain. And then we dip into the 80s, 84 by 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock, and then 81 by 11 o'clock. There's another look outside. It's 82 at the airport right now, 84 Stinson, 82 Kelly, and 83 over there at Randolph. Satellite picture shows just partly cloudy skies and 
Most places in the low 80s uh, to mid 80s at this hour. We are seeing one 90 degree reading down there in Carrizo Springs, our typical hot spot. And they've got more sun down there. The heat index today will be up near 100 in Carrizo Springs, probably over 100 in Katua. We're looking for a heat index, a peak heat index this afternoon, close to 95 here in town. Long term forecast high pressure tries to drift a little bit closer this weekend but then gets pushed back to the north and west again. This opens the door for more rain next week. We get a little disturbance rolling in. Could see a weak frontal boundary that should enhance our rain chances Tuesday and Wednesday. Those are the two days we're looking at in the seven day forecast for our best rain chance 40% both of those days. Otherwise, we're talking the low 90s and just a very small rain chance through Monday with uh, overnight lows staying right there in the mid 70s. Uh, looks like we could get some more decent rain out of this next system next week, which is pretty impressive. We'll keep it going here in July with the uh, wet forecast, guys. I like it. Thank you. Yep. All right. So we started Justin's segment by saying, can't believe it's still July. It feels like that. But now football's around the corner. Football is right around the corner. Cowboys and Steelers get to start training camp next week because they are playing in the Hall of Fame game. And one of the battles to watch at Cowboys training camp will be for starting tight end and in college football. Aggies to Marvin Leal will take part in SEC Media Days. That's a pretty cool honor coming up. Just chose to give them tickets because I, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a brilliant thing. You know, maybe they'll, like I said, get inspired to be a boxer. Um, they come to a live event, uh, and, and I know uh, San Antonio is really big on basketball, but you know turning into some boxing. That will be a, an amazing opportunity for the kids. World Boxing Champion Jermail Charlo did a cool thing by handing out tickets to his fight to the Boys and Girls Club of San Antonio in Big Board Sports. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. One week from today, the Dallas Cowboys will hold their first practice of kickoff 2021 training camp in Oxnard, California. One of the priorities of camp is to find a starting tight end. Blake Jarwin is back and ready to go after missing last season with a knee injury. He appeared to be the heir apparent to Jason Witten, but then he got hurt. Dalton Schultz stepped up last season with Jarwin out and started 14 of 16 games. He would finish with 615 yards receiving and four touchdowns, the most in his NFL career. The Cowboys will have other tight ends in camp, including Jeremy Sprinkle, but the battle between Jarwin and Schultz will be key. The boys will arrive in Oxnar next Tuesday. Wednesday, Jerry Jones and Mike McCarthy will take the mic, and then Thursday, the boys will practice. UTSA running backs and Sierra McCormick picked up two more preseason All-American honors. He was named preseason second team All-American by Sporting News and preseason second team All-American from Athlon Sports. McCormick now boasts four preseason All-American nods for major national publications this summer, also making the second teams for Walter Camp and Phil Still. UTSA punter Lucas Dean was also named preseason second team All-American by Sporting News. Offensive lineman Kenyon Green and defensive lineman DeMarvin Leal will join Texas A&M head coach Jimbo Fisher at SEC Media Days next Wednesday in Hoover, Alabama. Entering his junior season, Leal's become a disruptive force for the Aggies with 75 total tackles, 12 and a half tackles for loss, and four and a half sacks. Yesterday afternoon, unified WBC, WBA, and IBF super welterweight world champion Jamil Charlo paid a visit to the Boys and Girls Club of San Antonio. He held a meet and greet with the kids ahead of his fight Saturday night, and the Coyote also stopped by to hang out with the kids and the champ. It's a beautiful thing to be here with the children and see, see you know, their, their smiles on their face. You know, we've been through so much all together within the last year or so. So, you know, just to see kids that want to, you know, be inspired, they love boxing and they want to do more for, you know, come to the fights and they want to do more for themselves and possibly uh, this may be something that they do to feed their family. Charlo gave the kids tickets to his fight Saturday night at the AT&T Center when he faces WBO world champion Brian Castaño for undisputed status at super welterweight. All four belts are on the line. All right, Larry, thank you so much. Awesome when you see people give back to the community. It is indeed. He's a good guy. All right, thanks, Larry. And uh, we are looking at some nice guys over at SA Live, Mike and Fiona, Ooh. with some nice food, Ooh. of course. Well, if you're looking for something new to try, the Alamo Biscuit Company has got this on the menu. Shrimp and grits, and Chef Cesar Zapata is here and putting those babies on the skillet. And you have a very important tip when cooking shrimp, right? Sure. Um, let them cook. 
you know? Let them cook all the way. A lot of people try to move them early on. Um, right now, if you try to move them, they're kind of stuck on. Okay. So just let them cook. They'll get kind of opaque halfway through, and that's when it's time to flip. And they will release on their They'll own? They'll release on their own. Okay. okay. So wait for that moment. Wait for it, okay. and then you'll have perfectly cooked shrimp. Okay, oh. so we want to know, how do you like your shrimp? Let us know at SA Live Case Out on Facebook Four and stuff, Twitter. Man. I Boy, know. Roll and all that. And so <laughs> Animal Biscuit Company is more of the uh, breakfast brunch place. Then for lunch and dinner, you go back to Sangria on the Burry. Sure. And you've got a new uh, dinner menu, right? We have a menu com new menu coming out and a very special meat option that I'm um, really excited about. Once you have this product, there's no going back. The best really? Oh, yeah. All right. So you're going to find that out coming up. And we've got some music on the show as well. So my way me. Yeah. Yes, we've got a performance by local musicians, the Solis Brothers, as they share their debut EP. Yep, 18 and 22 years old. And these two can harmonize together, play guitar like nobody's business. We're going to be hearing a couple of different uh, songs from them. Also, if new tapas bar that Jen is going to be taking us to, which sounds really good, tapas and wine. Ooh. Perfect little combination. Yeah, that's a great show. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.